Okay, welcome. It's uh, Ryzen 7 launch day around the world. Very exciting moment. People are lining up out there, taking advantage of, for the first time ever, being able to buy a CPU, run it at home based on the Zen architecture. So, you know, for some of you guys, you've been working on this for four years or more. How do you feel? Are you excited? Are you relieved? Are you tired? Are you pumped up? How do you guys feel? Well, I can't believe this day is finally here. Yeah. I've been waiting for this for, well, four years, but it, it was such a roller coaster journey. And when you do these things, these ground up cores, and this isn't my first one, but they're always, yeah. there's so much risk in it. There's so much uh, dynamic movement going on. It's just great to finally get here, to be here. I'm, I'm hugely excited, as you can see. Yeah, Suzanne, <laughs> how about you? You kind of been all shotgun with uh, Mike through the whole process. So, yeah, 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 definitely. I am so psyched because it's just, it's this whole journey, it's like, I think we've been able to see where we're gonna get with this processor and we, no one else has really believed it's gonna happen. And so I am so ready for it to be out there so we can go, yeah, uh-huh, we did it. You did, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, James, Gerald, you guys have been working on it from a product perspective, from a marketing perspective. How do you guys feel today? Oh, just incredible excitement. This is, you, know, you guys feel kind of like you've delivered it. Now it's time to pick it up and run it around, right? This is incredible excitement. I can't wait to get out there, talk to the fans, see their reaction, really just take this thing into the next level of sales and exploring the new platform. Just so much fun to come. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for the world to kind of get in on the, on the secret, right? So we've, we've had a chance to to start playing and, and doing our thing internally, but I'm ready to turn that over to all the end users and gamers and, um, and consumers out there that are gonna get a chance to actually put this thing into an experience. So that's, that's what I'm excited about. So one of the things, Gerald, I know you worked on was helping to set up the ability to pre-order Ryzen mm -hmm. 7. Has it surprised you how big the reaction has been to that? Um, Yes. I mean, you know, I was, I was very excited about it anyway. I knew it was going to be big. I knew it was going to be, you know, a monumental time to really bring back choice um, in an area of the market that, that really needed it. Um, but everybody, you know, from our partners uh, through to our, our customers and fans have just rallied around uh, this product. And I'm, I'm excited. You know, it just continues to um, get us pumped for seeing them out in the wild. So obviously your role was a bit on the marketing side and working with e-tailers. Why don't we go around and you guys tell us a little bit about what your specific role was in either you know, Zen Core development or the Ryzen processor. Mike, do you want to start us sure. off? Uh, I was the chief architect of Zen. Um, you know, put together what, what we wanted to build. We knew we had to do a grounds up core. Uh, you know, our previous generations were not, uh, you know, there were incremental derivatives and we were not getting where we wanted to be. So we knew we had to, to uh, go back to square one and, and design a new core, something that would be uh, the best we could design, the best in class uh, at the time. So it's, and assembled a great team. Uh, Suzanne here led the team, kept them together. You know, it was a very, like I said before, it was very risky, you know, a lot of, a lot of moving parts and just she helped keep it together and, and we managed to hit our goals. We set very aggressive goals for ourselves and we managed to hit them, which is a uh, great. Uh, absolutely, great and congratulations, <laughs> obviously. So Suzanne, tell us about leading the team, uh, creating the Zen products. Yeah, so I like to say I led the team that put the Zen in Ryzen. Okay, that's very good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's pretty catchy, don't you yeah, think? Yeah, it is. Um, no, it's, this team is outstanding. It was, you know, there, there was a lot of concern at the beginning because we don't typically do this kind of thing where you just sort of toss everything out and start all over. And we had people who were serious doubters at the very beginning or, mm -hmm even further into it than the very beginning. <laughs> but, uh, they're engineers. <laughs> they're yes. engineers, exactly. Or, or also outside the company as well. Oh, when we started outside to the speak company, to outside the team. Yeah. You know, you would get a lot of people going, is it really going as good as, you know, you think it is? And are, are we hearing the right thing? Um, but the team really rallied around it. I mean, we had ups and downs, but everyone hung together. And it's a long process and it was a difficult journey, but it really, it made it worthwhile in the end. Yeah, absolutely. So James, I'll, I'll come to you. Now, one of the things I know about you is that you bring an outside in perspective to AMD. You had a you know, big role in the workstation business. You've been an independent product reviewer. How did that influence your role and what was your role in bringing Ryzen to market? Uh, so I was part of the 
a product management team uh, responsible for advising on channel business development, so the component channel for DIYs, enthusiasts, system builders. And it was really um, a key task were to make sure the ecosystem was enabled, make sure that the, the motherboard partners had the right features, were targeting the right things, were talking about it in the right way, as well as supporting sales, you know, getting their questions inside to engineering teams and to the uh, marketing teams so we can understand how to sell this thing, but also third party companies, coolers memory, cases, all these kind of things had to pull together as a well, cohesive whole. And I had a, 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 I've hopefully had a, ho a strong hand in making that a success. You have, you definitely and, have. Uh, it's been, you know, bringing the perspective of being a reviewer, being an enthusiast, being born of the internet, right? Coming of age in the old Athlon days, this is right back to the heart of the most exciting time before now. Now this is, we're in the, the glory days again. Absolutely, <laughs> excellent, James. Okay, Gerald, how about you? Um, so like James said, the component area of the business is, is huge for us. You know, people that are building their own systems from scratch, the smaller system builders or system integrators, e-tailers that are out there. Um, it's a big part of the Zen story, you know, which will continue to evolve. Um, but uh, the component channel got to be the, the tip of the spear. And so I head up, head up marketing for our worldwide component team, um, head up social, um, and really just try to drive that message out to an end customer. Um, and for me, this has been a, a labor of love because I grew up as a, you know, building systems when I was a teenager. So we would go to um, this first Saturday swap meet in Dallas and go and pick components. I burned up a couple systems, <laughs> you know, but, <clears throat> but that was who I was before I came to AMD. So it's been great uh, to, to go through this process and, you know, wearing the, the logo here, so that was part of, of something that we all got the chance to step out of our day day jobs and yeah. normal roles and, and look at things like uh, the logo treatment and um, really building a brand uh, that was gonna stand the test of time. So we put the rye in rye. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and so that's really been uh, what we've worked on to date and we get to turn that into actual marketing campaigns and, and driving those experiences to our to our community which is where we're at right now which is extremely extremely exciting well and I know with both of you your background in building PCs or building workstations and how much you care about the enthusiast community really shapes the way you work why don't we pivot outside AMD and talk a little bit about all these you know hopefully millions of people who are going to be using uh, Ryzen processors this year and what we think it means to them, what we think it's going to mean to the gamer, to the hardware enthusiast, to the person who's a you know avid digital content creator, that type of thing. Any any thoughts on what we think Ryzen's going to do for them? Oh yeah, for sure. I think I think if you'd said when we started this project that the most predominant use case for gamers would be to broadcast it to everybody to sort of see them playing games and that more people would watch gamers playing games and would watch NBA finals, people would have said you were crazy. They said, we're not designed for that, there's no way. But we did, and we are, and we're doing it. It's the incredible inflection. We're catching the wave right as this thing is growing and burgeoning. Esports, which I know is a topic very close to your heart, mm -hmm. you're all in on that, which is great because we've got this great product that delivers the best streaming experience and gaming experience at the same time. And we're able to truly capture and redefine a market at an inflection point, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, I just um, look at the fact that innovation is not a given. You know, this this challenge, this um, desire to start over from scratch um, <laughs> with something and really make something new is not something that just just happens, right? Um, you have to take a lot of risks. You have to um, take a lot of chances to build something new. And so, I think for any use case, you know, whether it's gamers or um, digital creators, um, people that are, are doing professional things and really uh, driving everything that this processor can do, um, they get the benefit of that, of that innovation, that competition, and uh, we just continue pushing the whole industry forward, which is awesome. So that, that's very well said. So yeah. for you, well, the two of you, that. yeah, four years building a core <laughs> and then turning it into an SOC, I don't know how much time you guys have had to think about you know, what the gamers and the content creators will do with it, but any, any thoughts Well, certainly, on that? I think competition is a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. And, you know, in that market, there hasn't been a lot of choice out there. You know, people, their rigs are getting older and older, or they're getting, you know, the performance hasn't been going up the way it should be. And I think we bring a unique uh, processor to that market. There's gonna be a lot of competition. You're gonna see a lot of dynamics, and it's great. We love it, you know, bring it on, let's go. 
I know that um, one of my sons wanted to build a, a, a PC yes. this summer, and I said, no, <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you're going to wait a little while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had the same so, conversation. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so there's a lot of excitement in my house, I know. I, I can imagine. So, yeah. okay, um, I'll ask you guys all this question, but I'll start with the two of you because I think you probably knew before anybody else. And what was that moment where you realized, hey, we were going to achieve our goals with, with the Zen Core and then with the Ryzen processor, and you let that excitement or moment kind of sink in. Do you remember when that was? <laughs> I, I, I've got one of them. Yeah. Um, I, we, we tracked the performance weekly, you know, and we... We would have our, our you know, monthly all hands with the whole design team and our performance modeling lead, Matt, you know, had drawn the graph of performance going up as you add features, but there was always this caveat. Okay, now, now we're gonna start into execution mode once we do timing work and bug work, you know, it's gonna go down. And so, you know, get ready. And then and then every week he would show it again, he'd be like, Okay, well next week it's gonna start going down again. And you know, he, you know, in one meeting we like we're all like, Okay, so where is it going down? I mean that was there were points like that where you know, it's a really tight design, and it did, never took that big nosedive. That's when I started to really feel like, right. yeah, this thing is is going to be amazing. Fantastic. Well, and, and like, we have seen that historically on past projects, and one of the best parts about this team was that, you know, you get to points where you do have to give up on some things, or that I did, didn't quite work out the way you wanted, but this team was always scrambling, trying to, well, if we're going to lose that, I had this idea, we, had, we didn't put it in, let's go see if we can squeeze that in and we can hold the line even though we have to give up on something. So it was just uh, an amazing team to, to get it that way. And okay, so actually I think I found out from you, James, about where the processor was coming in. So why don't you talk a little bit about that moment for you and Oh, that's a good felt. one. There's been yeah. a, a good number of like, oh yeah, this is a hallelujah moment. I think probably <laughs> yeah. my favorite was the day I discovered how exactly Precision Boost and XFR and Pure Power were all gonna come together and deliver this great experience and how good that was gonna be. Because that was when it really clicked with me of like, whoa, this is, this is more than just cores and threads. This is, this is intelligence, this is design that we haven't seen before in this space. This is gonna be incredible. This is differentiating, right? Everything we've been asking for mm -hmm. from product for the last however many years, right there in one box that simple and easy. Performance, pricing, power efficiency, genuine innovation. I mean, you couldn't build a better checklist to go off and give to a business unit. That was amazing. How about you, Gerald? Big moment where you realized Ryzen was gonna come in maybe even better than you'd hoped? So, I mean, I, I've been here over 10 years. Um, and so usually I have my go-to people that, you know, I look them in the eye and try to gauge, you know, what exactly does 5% mean to you and, and all that. Um, and one of those go-to people, um, actually Emil, uh, you know, I, I looked at him and I had not seen that, um, the swagger, you know, and it wasn't, you know, you can tell when somebody's talking about something and they're really excited, but when they're super calm, and it's basically an I got that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, that that was it for me. I was like, I'm uh, we're in. And then from a marketing standpoint, um, you just get to you get to, you know, tell that story, right? And just translate that excitement into an actual use case for somebody. So for me, I switched into experience mode. I was like, well, we need to show this off, right? Mm -hmm. Not tell people, oh, it's going to be great, but just show it off yep. in its natural habitat of the PC. So that's and, what I was looking for. Yeah, and through that process, that's been a constant for everything you and James and the team have done since, is to always lead with the experiences that are mm -hmm. delivered. So that's a pretty important pivot. Okay, as much fun as we're having, we're gonna take a little short break, look at a very cool Ryzen video, and when we come back, we'll have one more important guest come and join us, so we'll need to make a little more room on the couch here, and we'll pick up the conversation from there. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay, great. 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 Today is a really big day for AMD, and actually, it's a really big day for all PC gamers and content creators and everybody who loves high-performance processors. Today is all about Ryzen. We wanted to disrupt the PC market. We wanted to bring innovation, choice, and performance to as many people as possible. Well, I'm very proud to tell you today for the first time, we not only beat 
the goal. We beat it by a lot. The 1800X has a base clock frequency of 3.6 gigahertz, and it brings the boost all the way up to four gigahertz. The Ryzen 7 1800X is the fastest eight core desktop processor in the market. Our competition is priced at $1,000. AMD Ryzen 499. Throughout this year, we're gonna bring out a whole portfolio of Ryzen processors. Ryzen 5, Ryzen 3, so the Ryzen 1600X, never before have we, we seen this level of performance in those price ranges. We want every PC enthusiast, regardless of their budget, to be able to experiment and create with their PC. Every Ryzen processor is unlocked. We're trying to get the eight core CPU record. Tell me what we're looking for. 2445. 2445. 2449! There's tremendous pent up demand for Ryzen. This is our best ecosystem ever. I could not be more proud of Ryzen. I could not be more proud of what we're going to bring to the PC market. The best starts now. Okay, we're back, and we've made room for another guest. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, JT. Uh, so, Jim, one of the things the group's yeah. already uh, done before you were able to join us is talk a little bit about their specific role okay. on either Zen or, or Ryzen. Can you share a little bit with us? Yeah, my specific role. You know, <clears throat> I would probably describe it as the chief advocate of the user uh, or the customer, right? I, ultimately, I think that's what my job is. We want Ryzen to be a great experience for all, all of our customers, right? So PC gamers, prosumers that create content, uh, you know, the enthusiasts that's building their own system, that's overclocking. We want that experience to be fantastic. And I kind of think of my role is, is advocating for, for those people um, to make sure the experience is great. So when I badger the engineering team, <laughs> when I badger the marketing team, when I'm badgering every part of our team, it's really on behalf of the customer to make sure that's a great experience. So. Outstanding. And, and of course, that you, know, you help drive that through AMD. And now one of the questions the team has also uh, answered so far is when was that moment that from your perspective you knew you were going to be able to deliver what you'd hope to be able to deliver to the enthusiast, to the PC gamer, to the content creator? Yeah, I think that my moment um, probably came, actually it was quite a while ago, it came about a month after I started at AMD, right? So, so I started at AMD just a, a little less than two years ago. And one of the reasons I joined AMD is because I had heard that they were making some new investments in processor architecture. And I'm a, I'm a processor architect by training. That's where I started my career. And so that intrigued me. I heard from a couple friends that they were really seriously investing in building a brand new processor core. And so that was one of the reasons I started talking to AMD, and that's one of the reasons I joined. And I'd heard really good things, but you can only tell so much from the outside. Uh, it hit me about 30 days into the job when I got a chance to spend time with the engineers, spend time with the architects, and really kind of lift up the hood and get underneath and see what the engine inside is. I, I was blown away. It was incredible what they were doing, incredible the innovation. And so that, for me, that was the moment where I said, wow, we've got something real here. This is a great product. This is gonna be great for the industry, for end users. And so that's, I guess that's when it hit me. And I think I heard that you maybe spent the previous weekend building some systems. I did actually, systems. I built my, <laughs> that I built okay? my, my own Ryzen uh, yeah. 7 system, 1800X, Good. Uh, just this weekend. Good choice. I, my son and I yeah. built it and we got Battlefield 1 running on it. And yeah, it was a great experience. Outstanding, I love hearing that. Yeah. So James, I'll come back to you and kind of play off of that. There's gonna be a, a fair number of people out there today who of course want to, to buy Ryzen either you know, from a boutique OEM, maybe you know, a little bit later from some global OEMs or build their own system. What else do we want people to do or, or think about today as it relates to that's a, Bison that's coming to market? Great question. So when I, when I hear that, what I, I come back to me so strongly is the kind of what we thought of when we first got to grips with the platform, which is discover, create, and evolve. 
So discover what you can do with this platform, where you can go, the next level of gaming, create your, your next version of PC use. Maybe you've never thought about being a prosumer right. before, but now you've got, it's right on your fingertips. It's right there. There's so much cool stuff. And then evolve by really understanding how much you can grow and expand. We've got this great long life in this product family. There's so much more that can be done. There's tons of little knobs and dials to tweak. There's tons of things to play with if you're an overclocker or a performance tuner. Yeah. So, you know, treat it like, uh, you know, the whole basket of oysters, right? Just explore it and have fun. I like that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So, um, Mike, I think I've already gotten a sense from you, or hopefully our, our audience has as well, you know, that you're you know, very proud of what's been achieved with Zen and with Ryzen as the chief architect. But one of the questions I think many end users might have is, why does it take four years to build a product <laughs> like, like, like Ryzen? You know, what is it from inception to being able to you know, test it and put it in people's hands? Is there a simple way to, to explain well, what that like, entails? Why can't you speed, <laughs> it, can't you speed that up a little bit for us, right? Everybody wants Let's get it down to two years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say that you know, to be a successful lead architect, you have to have really strong leads underneath you, which I did, which I made. So they only bring sort of the hardest problems, you know, and I can help them with them, but they can pretty much you know, do all the work. And it's a very, you know, to build a processor with this kind of performance level, mm -hmm. this low power is a very complicated thing. And that's uh, both, there's that complication and there's the process technology piece where that's evolving. As, as we're building the architecture, we're getting updates on what the process technology is going to be able to do and just dynamically reacting like that. And we definitely would like it to be shorter because, I mean, in four years, you can imagine how much the market moved. There's new workloads, there's right. new end cases, and we have to try to react to those while we have this processor in yes. flight. But By the way, there was no judgment in that question no, no, about no. four years. <laughs> I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're actually getting a little bit shorter. <laughs> so we do them in parallel so that we can uh, get more chips out. Excellent. But I think doing a, a grounds up rebuild from the, you know, it's basically you took a clean sheet of paper, right? right? I think for doing that level of rebuild and complete grounds up innovation, I mean, that's uh, four years is not that bad, right? Yeah, so I'll defend my <laughs> <laughs> I know how much work went into this. So maybe we'll stay up here for a moment. Uh, biggest achievement in the Zen architecture or in the Ryzen design? I know some new ground was. Uh, New well, paths were blazed, if you will, with, with Ryzen. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, well, that first, that's like asking me which of my kids I love the most. <laughs> I, mean, I love everything the team did, and they did a great job. But uh, I think for this project, maybe, the, you know, single-threaded IPC was a big factor. But the most questions I got was, you guys are going to add 40% IPC. The power is just going to go through the roof. How are you going to do that? And we knew we needed to do something different. And for the first time, we really intersected power into the high-level design process at the beginning. And we didn't really, we had a separate team set up to do that, so there was a focus. We did, and we needed it because we didn't really have any tools for that part of the project. We have tools that intersect later in the project, but up front, we had to make it all up. <laughs> and you know, as you can bet, engineers, they all have different opinions. <laughs> and so, but we got the team rallied around. The tools weren't perfect, but they were what we could use to iterate, see how the design was evolving, both from, normally we're doing frequency and, and IPC, but now we could see how the power was evolving too, and really, hit that goal that we set for ourselves. Which ultimately was 52%, <laughs> yes. not 40, right? While, so that, while that's your, the power yes. as flat with our previous generation, so. So Suzanne, But we were thoughts? never allowed to say that. <laughs> 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 but no, it's higher, it's better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the power definitely was an interesting one because we did, we sort of, when people would propose a new feature, we also said, and now we need to figure out what the power impact right. is. And that, it was yeah. uh, a little irritating for the team because, you know, they want to just, you know, IPC, it's, <laughs> we have much better techniques for measuring it. And so power, it was, it was sort of more forced on the team, but we've made huge strides in what we've been able to do early on. Uh, the back end part has always been, there's been pieces of that there, but the early on measurement and analysis of power was amazing. And, and one of the, the favorite moments, because you were talking about grounds up, yeah. was that point in time when we actually first got an instruction running through <laughs> the machine. Because you got all these people architecting and coding and getting your infrastructure set up and you're sitting here getting a little anxious 
you know? And then you get that first one that gets all the way through the machine. And I think it was like a day before we had, a, you know, a all hands right. with the entire core team and we were able to present uh, a slide that said, Zen is alive. That was a very cool moment. That was really cool. <laughs> Definitely. Jim, anything think, you think about that? I was just going to add, uh, you know, I think that balancing the performance and power, I think that's, that's one of the reasons Zen is such a well-balanced yeah. architecture, right? Because yeah. you weren't driving just for one particular right. thing, right? Performance at all costs. You were trying to come up with an architecture and a microarchitecture that really balanced multiple constraints, right? Yeah. And I, I think that's... It's also why I think it's so well named, right? Yeah, Mark, that's why that's, that's, that's why, why I you named picked it the Zen, Zen name, yeah. right? Zen for balance. We, yeah. Hopefully, we hit the balance. And remember, there's 4.8 billion transistors in that. <laughs> that's a lot of balance. That's why. Yeah. It, <laughs> back to why it takes four years. <laughs> one of those is wrong. Mike's still trying to defend it. He's still on the four years. years. <laughs> yeah. I just remembered that, though. I just want to point that. So, I mean, I can just say, just as a non-engineer listening to you guys describe this, it's very inspiring. What are some of the things about? The, the, the breakthroughs, the innovation, the ambitious goals that you guys think might inspire future generations of engineers who are thinking about that or already th you know, committed to that as a career at this point. So I have three sons yes. who are teenagers and into college and I can say that in the past, my job has been somewhat not interesting to them. <laughs> and now I'm like a rock star, you know? <laughs> They're like so proud of what I've done. And I see that actually in, you know, how many bazillion people want to link into you. And <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, being a nerd is cool now. And uh, it's, it's, a fun, it's a fun turnabout here. Um, I think that the, the fact that we weren't afraid to innovate and we could make a big, bold yeah. step forward is a really a big key piece of that. That's, that's a really great story. And one of the things I remember from... Uh, Lisa Sue's presentation yeah. at the event in San Francisco is how she talked about how it is the PC where you know, you know tens or hundreds of millions of people get connected to high performance computing. So it's right. very, very real, right? Only so many people get to use supercomputers or you know very high end workstations, but that's right. kind of the same thing probably for your sons, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, and then even with it being the long process, um, uh, you know, a famous architect once said to me, you can't finish until you start. So it was just, Getting the team to, hey, we need to do this, we need to start if we're going to finish, right? So Suzanne, you brought up you know, kind of some favorite moments again uh, from the launch. Why don't I come back to, to Gerald and James on this? So you had a different perspective, Gerald, as you were, you know, again, you're an enthusiast yourself at heart, um, but you drive a considerable part of AMB's marketing and social media and community engagement. Uh, what are some of the big moments that you look back on? Uh, that got us to this point. I think I know what Gerald is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know, too. I know, you, I know what he's yeah. You think you, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, there have been, um, there's been a lot of evolution, I think, from the marketing standpoint as well, because the, the world has changed. You know, it's not, um, it's not just banner ads and it's not just TV commercials and things like that. Um, and so we had to, we had to evolve the marketing um, to really honor what the engineers are doing. My, Talk about New Horizon, yeah, my the best, event in my December. My yeah. day at work, you know, <laughs> until today, um, <laughs> uh, was definitely uh, the New Horizon event that we did um, because we went into it with a social first, streaming first, experience first uh, mentality. And uh, we also were, are, you know, blessed with having Lisa uh, come up and really kick off that experience Most because definitely. she influenced yeah. the brand. I, like, I don't think people understand how much she actually influenced and, and Jim influenced the, the brand. And so we had a lot of engineering feedback and a lot Probably of more executive you support. <laughs> <laughs> you used the word badgering a little while uh, ago. So. <laughs> Very influential. Is yeah. Um, but yeah, so the New Horizon event was our chance to, to take our marketing to a level that we hadn't seen before and really integrate all the stuff that I've learned from this like connected community that we interact with. I mean, right. the, you know, well, uh, so that's going to be is, my next question. Yes. Is, you know, huge in that community understands the power of people to make or break you no matter how great your technology is in that public sphere if you're not really true to uh, to that environment. So uh, New Horizon was definitely my, my favorite day so far, uh, but it's just it's only going to go up from here. So let's pick that up, James. So you're very active in many communities, um, Reddit amongst many others, Robert yep. Halleck also, you know, one of your uh, uh, peers in that. But that also means with the millions of people interested in what was happening with Ryzen, 
uh, year plus of not being able to answer their questions. How does it feel to, at this point, be able to, you know, get very direct, share all the information, it's all the be great details yeah. from the yeah. yeah. finished to specs? Oh, yeah, tons of relief, tons of excitement. I mean, it's just been such a great journey so far, but it really is just starting, right? The, I get to start talking now, not that I've mm. stopped talking and I'm done. This is right. the start, this is the beginning. Yeah. Just, you know, we're talking of great moments, if you'd know, if asked me, I would have said New Horizon, but he stole it. So I'm gonna say Computex. <laughs> For me, that was really last year, your one year anniversary, yeah. when um, I was standing just over in the way, building what I think is the first desktop Ryzen PC. I was the first guy to put one in the chassis. That was me, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. right, to send it over to Computex for my first ever trip to Taiwan to watch Lisa and Jim get up and see it running live for the Ooh. first time. Mm -hmm. And then the messages that are coming in through yeah. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, right. Reddit, all that kind of stuff, turn from pensive apprehension into, oh yeah, you guys did it. You're there, you're going, it's coming. That was, that was a pivotal moment because before that, all the conversations are kind of angsty, they're kind of hard, because you can't say much, and <laughs> right, also because right. they don't want to believe you. They, they, want to, right. they want to be the skeptic and call it and say, no, that's not it. But after that, it was, okay, yes. That, that was the permission to believe moment, and that really mm -hmm. has shaped the back half of the year. It's going to shape mm -hmm. our next year as well. Yeah. A lot of fun. So, um, you know, JT, I think, um, I think one of the coolest things about getting to this point, the launch, has yeah. been that every single team has just brought their A game, right? You can you can sense from everybody, whether it's the engineering team, the customer support team, the marketing team, I mean, everybody's just put their yep. whole heart and soul into it. Yep. And I think that that's incredible, right? And it's been a great experience. So, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been amazing to observe and, yeah. and be a part of. So I was actually going to talk about James mentioned pivotal, pivotal moments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pivotal moments, um, and Jim. You know, you joined AMD a couple of years ago. You, you know, you did uh, processor design earlier in your career. Um, how do you view the launch of Ryzen as in any way changing the the CPU landscape going forward? I know this is something you think about quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, that's a good question. I think it really represents the return of of true innovation and and choice back into the market, right? Which I think is good for, it's good for the industry, it's good for the end users, it's good for everybody, right? Um, I think the entry of Ryzen back into the market um, really will trigger a whole, new, a whole new set of innovation within the marketplace, it'll trigger better competition, and ultimately that benefits everybody. And I think that's gonna be across, you know, today we're talking about Ryzen and desktop, but it's not just desktop. Uh, you know, as we take Zen into servers, as we take it into laptop devices, I think all those markets will benefit from, from the increased innovation, the choice, the increased competition. So I think it'll be great for the whole industry. Excellent. Thank you. Well, I think we're just about out of time. I can't think of five people that I would have rather shared, you know, this big Ryzen 7 <laughs> launch day with. So thank you guys. Thanks for sharing so much of you know, what your role's been, your contributions, your excitement uh, for uh, Ryzen and that whole program. And of course, ultimately we're all here, you know, uh, doing this video today because it is about all those millions of end users who we hope are going to enjoy and unboxing that Ryzen 7 processor and some of the other Ryzen processors to come um, and get those amazing experiences that I know that you were all building the processor uh, to deliver. So thank you guys very much. Very exciting day. I look forward to more of these because as you said, Jim, there's more Zen there's products more to come. There's oh, yeah. more to come. So why don't we leave it at that? Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Sure.